One fateful day nearly 10 years ago, in the deepest, dankest corners of the internet, and by that I mean 4chan's video game board, a post would be made asking if the board users would be interested in playing something the poster termed a quote, Yandere Simulator, a game where you play as an anime girl so obsessed with her love interest, Senpai, that she goes on a quest in order to surreptitiously kill all of his potential girlfriends without revealing to him her psychopathic nature. We're only one second into this script and I'm already getting flashbacks to my last video. This post, which initially seemed innocuous, would eventually trigger a series of events resulting in a never-ending whirlwind of false promises, cringe, and disgusting allegations, as well as lead directly to the unearthing of the creator's disgusting internet behavior going back more than a decade. So buckle up, draw my 49ers, because we're about to go in deep. Deeper than we've ever gone before. Deep into a story absolutely chock full of the delicious and nutritious cringe, memes, and degeneracy the draw my 49ers so love to gorge themselves on. This is the tale of the horrific and painfully slow decline of Alex Mann, the Yandere developer. But before we truly get into this video, it's time for a classic Draw My 49 disclaimer. As many of you may have noticed from what I said in that introduction, or from anything you may have seen online about Yandere Dev in the past few months, he's been accused of some very serious things, and some people may find descriptions of them disturbing. I won't be going incredibly in-depth on each and every event, but I will be bringing up the allegations. Just know that, at every point which might be disturbing, I will offer a timestamp in the description for anyone who wants to skip to the next section, as always. And once again, any events described are reflections of other people's opinions, not mine. And also, thank you so much for the support, Draw My 49ers. It brings me such joy knowing that the Draw My 49 army is now over 10,000 strong, with one of my videos literally having over a quarter million views. It's mind-boggling to me, but thank you all so much. And by the way, everyone, I wasn't insulting LEGO City Undercover. I was saying it's silly for someone who loves it so much to be saying cuss words on Twitter. Gosh, you bakas. <laughs> but now, with all that out of the way, let's get into the literal two decades of unhinged and ridiculous behavior that led Alex Mann to become one of the internet's most notorious and controversial figures. The format of this video is something I debated for a while, simply because there's just so much to cover. What I ultimately decided is that I would chronicle the overall plotline of our lascivious villain's online life in chronological order, not in order of when each thing about him was discovered. This means I'll be starting long before Alex was known as Yandere Dev, because, well, there was no Yandere to be the dev of. Because of this, though, I figured I would provide this background section to introduce the situation as a whole and tell you why you should even care about this crazy plotline more wacky than any Marvel villain's backstory. See, Yandere Simulator, the game Yandere Dev is obviously famous for, was at one point certainly one of the internet's most anticipated video game releases ever. I don't think I can overstate the hype this game had behind it, after it managed to worm its way into the mainstream. The demo build was played by YouTube golden boys like Markiplier, PewDiePie, and Jacksepticeye, whose young and impressionable fan bases immediately started chomping at the Alex Mann bit for more. Just to put the YouTube cultural zeitgeist of this era more into perspective for you, my dear Jormai 49ers, this was the same year that Five Nights at Freddy's was released, and then immediately erupted into fame very similarly catapulted by our YouTube darlings, whose playthroughs achieved similar views to their Yandere simulator playthroughs. So, in the same year alone, we had two dark indie games made by single-person development teams, launched into the mainstream spotlight by content creators, and immediately given a free shot at a guaranteed audience for their game. 
And now, in the present day, we have one largely forgotten developer whose legacy will more likely than not consist of an endless stream of grievances and allegations, and we have one billion dollar franchise consisting of 10 plus games, multiple book series, and a freaking Hollywood movie. Obviously, that comparison isn't entirely fair. I understand that it's probably easier to develop a game that takes up less than a gigabyte of storage than it is to complete Yandere Simulator. Although if we're accounting for the extremely convoluted lore, coming up with FNAF gets a lot more time consuming. Factor in the fact that Five Nights at Freddy's 2 came out literally three months after the first game, and we can understand just how monstrous Scott Cawthon's work ethic really is, perhaps it's unfair to compare anyone to that. But it remains undeniable that Yandere Dev was handed success on a literal silver platter during this era. He was able to start development on his dream project full time while subsisting off of Patreon donations from people desperate to see it come to fruition. This would become the golden age, and there would be few tremors in Yandere Dev's ironclad rule as he sat upon the throne of the internet's good graces. However, come 2017 and 2018, things wouldn't remain peaceful for much longer. A combination of horrendous programming and development choices on Alex's part, a few high-profile memes poking fun at him, and the unveiling of his disturbing and degenerate past internet behavior led to a fall from stardom that would not be handled gracefully. This led Alex to be labeled by many as a quote-unquote lol cow, a target for trolling and harassment by those who think they can, uh, milk him for lols. Great. From this point onward, his online following would diminish greatly, and he basically lost all respect both as an online figure and as a game developer. However, he didn't entirely lose his following. There still remained those who had come to care for him, and genuinely hoped he would be able to publish something, anything, after so much development. And it was amidst this limbo, which went on for years, where he was constantly memed on and criticized online, that some truly ugly allegations would rear their head. In September of 2023, a video was posted by YouTuber AliMCC that outlined various conversations across Snapchat and Discord involving Alex, who, mind you, is a 35-year-old man at this point, speaking inappropriately with, allegedly, a 16-year-old girl. I say allegedly, but... In January of this year, 2024, Yandere Dev actually posted an apology addressing these allegations. And, well, not many denials were made. This led most people to believe the allegations are completely correct, and it also led to the apology being memed to death until it was deleted literally less than a week later. With that brief overview out of the way, we're ready for a deep dive. I'm going to go through each of these outlined eras, the past era, pre Yandere Dev, the golden age, and finally, the downfall, and give the Jormai 49ers a breakdown of the most notable events, deplorable accusations, and of course, horrendous cringe. Are you ready? Oh, and of course, timestamps will be in the description, so if a particular era is not what you're looking for, feel free to skip to the next. With all of that finally out of the way, let's truly begin. In the earlier days of Alex's internet behavior, he exhibited an extremely specific and single-minded obsession with the similarities between the anime series Neon Genesis Evangelion and its lesser-known peer, Ra Zifan. Just as I, Jormai49, am clearly obsessed with being the best and most engaging edutainment creator on the entire internet, Alex was so enamored with the idea of spreading the word about how similar these two anime were that, on basically every site he used, he named himself Eva Zifon, Zifon Eva, Neon Eva Zifon, or some other amalgamation of the two anime's names. He also began to spam 4chan with cherry pick screenshots showing the similarities, some of which got him insulted due to a clear lack of critical thinking, like the time he mistook what is clearly a bus as a train in order to make his point stick better. 
The epitome of this obsession was when he created an entire website designed to house more than 400 images showing the similarities between the two anime. For the benefit of basically nobody, I, I don't know who was really viewing this site. Now, obviously, I'm not expecting you all to care about Alex's random obsession with the similarities between these anime. It has a significance beyond just being kind of weird. And the significance is that it was actually part of the way internet dwellers were able to link all of these accounts to the Yandere dev we know today. See, the fact that Alex was so consistently making these two anime part of his branding made it quite simple to connect the dots of his online activity across various sites, some of which being 4chan, Gaia Online, fanfiction.net, and most notably, Mogulus, which would later become Livestream.com, where he entered the burgeoning market of online livestreaming. And it also helped us link all of this activity to him in the current day, because he still hasn't let this go. As if the heavens aligned to allow Alex the ability to spread this strange esoteric anime knowledge to the world, in 2018, years after he stopped using all these accounts, he was featured on the YouTube channel Did You Know Anime to narrate their episode on Ra Zifan. And what do you know it, he spent a long time talking about how similar Ra Zifan is to Evangelion. If nothing else, this guy is consistent. But I digress. So now, I've talked a lot about how we knew these accounts belonged to Alex. But what exactly happened that was significant enough that people today still care? I mean, the last time these accounts were truly active was pre Yonder A Simulator era, which was nearly 10 years ago now. Well, given the current status of Alex's reputation, and the intense scrutiny he's been facing for years now, it led people to scrutinize the entirety of his online behavior. And what they found? Well, it, it was telling. The most significant of Alex's online activity occurred on the sites that I mentioned before. The forum site Gaia Online, where he chronicled his warped worldview and his extreme difficulties in getting a girlfriend. Fanfiction.net, where he uploaded some truly atrocious tales that would shake even the most die-hard coffin of Andy and Laylee fan. The Loser's Message Board, a forum for a webcomic where he fought the fanbase about how unattractive he finds quote-unquote sluts, and how his ideal girlfriend would be, uh, quote, youthful, babyish, and childlike. Oh my God. And as we've already established, he was active on 4chan and the streaming site Moculus. I'll now go through the most significant findings from each of the sites in the same order I just outlined, and we can potentially begin to understand the Joker-like origins of the man who became the internet's most controversial video game developer. Starting with Gaia Online, this site was most notable for hosting an extreme amount of cringe and down bad posts from Alex. Most notably, he got in the habit of consistently posting pictures of his face with full on rocket scientist level analyses of his features, and how those must have led girls to find him unattractive, as no girl had ever professed her love for him. He actually became somewhat infamous for this, with him introducing pictures of his face with prompts like, I'm afraid I have a creepy facial structure, and I have an ugly face and poor fashion sense, though he always makes sure to emphasize how nice and sweet he is as a person, to show that what he's really doing is fishing for compliments. Ultimately, this behavior was harmless. I mean, it was cringe and unnecessary, but harmless nonetheless. That is, until his desperation got the best of him, and he posted a photo of another user thirsting over her and saying how he, quote, would trade anything in the world for the chance to kiss a girl like that. And then she turned out to be a high schooler, oh, no. while he himself was already a legal adult. Keep in mind, this was only 2008, and he was already a full-grown man. He would have been either 19 or 20 years old at this point. Overall, this is once again effectively harmless, because there's no way to prove Alex knew how old this girl was, and honestly it's likely he didn't. 
but it's important to keep in mind going forward. On fanfiction.net, Alex continued his worrying behavior by posting disturbing tales such as I Am Your Slave and Life of a Sex Slave. These are some of his more infamous creations, so I'm sure anyone who has been following the drama for any period of time has heard of these. But trust me, don't try reading either of these. They are horrendous. Much worse than I expected, even given the names. Just to really decentivize anyone from going to find these, one of the tamest lines from the life of a sex slave is, I am a toy, and my owner plays with me every day. I would meme on it some more and make some more jokes about the lines, but it, it's honestly really depressing, trust me. Moving on, Alex's behavior on the loser's message board continued multiple worrying trends exhibited in his previous conduct. However, the most notable difference here was that this was the first time he made an attempt to explain his odd remarks and warped worldview. In the aftermath of a large-scale argument with the site's resident posters about his intense dislike of, as he puts it, sluts, Alex explains to another user the reason his perspective is so different from everyone else's. According to him, he was extremely reserved and never had a normal high school or even middle school experience. As he puts it, quote, Directly after elementary school, I was entered into an independent study program. It's a lot like homeschooling. I do all of my schoolwork at home, and once a week I turn the work into a teacher at my program's local building. I never had a chance to experience junior high or high school. I never found out what the quote-unquote real world was really like. This is why, for the longest time, I believed that the world was no different than it was in elementary school or in the various forms of media that I enjoyed. I watched countless box sets of anime and played through a countless number of video games. Coupled with my only worldly experiences in elementary school, this did not paint a very good picture of what the world is like for me. I'm not going to say it myself, but if someone wants to comment average redditor backstory, I will smack a like on it. <laughs> anyway. Now, with the added context that Alex was, honestly, basically raised on anime and video games, this next part makes a little more sense. Because, as I mentioned earlier, Alex tops off this already pretty horrendous and depressing anime villain origin story with the description of his ideal girlfriend. And let's just say, if you came here knowing the allegations he's faced, his descriptors won't necessarily surprise you. Obviously, I already mentioned adjectives like youthful, babyish, and childlike, but let's not forget naive, trusting, and malleable, all of which suggest a desire to have control over someone's thoughts and actions. Overall, Alex was ultimately harassed off the site, rightfully so, as his activity there culminated in a big meltdown in which he absolutely loses it and goes full reddit scorched earth on the loser's fanbase. I'm so out of here. I've totally demolished all of you in debate a thousand times already, if I should choose to honor your stupid rambling by calling it debate. You're all idiots. You're nothing like anyone else I've ever known, and none of you are a good asset to this planet or going anywhere in life. You all fail. Hard. I should have expected nothing less when I came to a forum for quote, punk ass cynical teenagers. Speaking of the comic itself, it has turned to bull and it's been dead for a long time now. I'm so through with all of you. There's not even a reason to continue typing. What's important is that I came, I kicked your asses, and now I'm over this worthless hole of a forum. Eva out. With all of this background out of the way, we can see somewhat of a pattern that had developed in Alex's behavior, even at this stage of his life. He would say controversial and deplorable things, and then, when called out for it, he would default to either describing his difficult childhood circumstances or lashing out with insults and refusing to let anyone else get the last word. So now, with it clearly established that Alex was not fit to handle an online platform, he decided to begin his live streaming career on the website Mogulus, which was just starting to gain traffic at that period in time. 
And given that he was one of the first streamers on the site to have actually a halfway decent streaming equipment, and that he constantly spammed 4chan with links to his stream, he actually managed to accrue somewhat of an audience. Now, honestly, most of the stuff he got up to while streaming was just more of the same behavior we've come to expect from our smack-talking, smut-writing bad boy. For example, one thing he was absolutely infamous for was flirting with every girl that joined the stream and banning any guy who talked to them in his chat. He also became well known for his obsession with the chest size of certain Nintendo characters, to the point that he would throw a tantrum when Nintendo nerfed the breast size, which is honestly unsurprising at this point. However, there was one extremely notable thing that may have happened on this stream, and it managed to alienate most of Alex's audience and cause them to go elsewhere for their live streaming fix. And this one is particularly disturbing. If you think you'll be triggered in any way by descriptions of uh, improper relationships, then I would advise you to skip to the next chapter. We're almost there regardless. But ultimately, what Alex has been accused of doing within this period, allegedly, is cultivating a relationship with a 14-year-old fan in his chat. In 2017, the girl came out with a full statement on the matter, which I suggest you read if you would like any more information on the allegations. If they are true, they would paint Alex as an extremely manipulative and entitled person, given that he has supposedly said things like how he felt he deserved to have a relationship with this 14-year-old girl due to the fact that he missed out on having a girlfriend in high school, and that he immediately banned her and started speaking badly about her as soon as she decided she didn't want to be in a relationship with him anymore. He also allegedly did more disgusting and degenerate things than this, but I won't be going into those here. There are other videos that do the allegations much more justice than I ever could. For now, what's important is that we finally reached the end of the Eva Zephon age. Alex had essentially destroyed whatever good faith that the internet had in store for him, and alienated what could have been a very lucrative career for himself as one of the internet's first online live streamers. But luckily enough, he was about to get the opportunity of a lifetime. Not only would he be handed yet another lucrative endeavor on a silver platter, but he would also get a golden opportunity to rebrand himself, to leave behind Eva Zephon and all of the animosity towards him, and to become something new. To become the Yandere Dev. Now, as I briefly mentioned in the intro of this video, Yandere Simulator as a concept originated from one single post that Alex made on a whim on 4chan, which managed to pick up some steam. I mean, it wasn't completely out of the blue. According to Alex, he worked at a quote-unquote video game company for three years, whatever that means, so he supposedly had development experience and simply wanted to see if it would be feasible to make his dream project on his own. And, well, long story short, it was feasible. People seemed genuinely interested in the idea of playing as a schoolgirl yandere, which is, as Alex puts it, a girl who loves a boy so much that she is willing to threaten, harm, or kill any other girl who seems interested in him, doing whatever it takes to worm their way into senpai's arms, even if that means killing their competition. Of course, there were people who fought back against the concept, calling it creepy for a grown man to be developing a game where this is the premise. I'll leave the judgments up to the Jormai 49ers. But what is undeniable is that Yandere Simulator was a hit. Especially starting in March of 2015, about a year after the project's inception, when PewDiePie uploaded his first playthrough of a demo version of the game. This was followed shortly by Jacksepticeye and Markiplier uploading their playthroughs, with Markiplier's in particular going absolutely viral, even sprouting a few channel memes like Boobs McKenzie. It was at this point that Alex, who was now going by Yandere Dev, was reassured that this was a worthwhile idea. He established a website specifically for posting updates on the game's progress, he made multiple YouTube channels for the same purpose, 
And in 2016, he opened a Patreon so he could continue developing the game full time without worrying about needing to do other work in order to make money. Although, what those Patreon funds went to has been called into question. Like the time he apparently used Patreon money to buy a sex doll and literally left a review on the sex doll site using his official email. But, uh,. Uh, l let's ignore this for now and go back to when all was well in the Yandere Kingdom. Because obviously, this is not where the story ended. If the Jormai 49ers have learned anything, it's that a sudden explosion of visibility almost always spells disaster. And this was certainly the case for the newly dubbed Yandere Dev. Although it did take a pretty long time for things to sour. But, speaking of a pretty long time, this actually brings us to the first grievance most people had with Yandere Dev. And what I mean by that is that the game's development was taking a pretty long time. It seems almost absurd to say that people were criticizing the fact that Yandere Simulator hadn't seen a full release even back in this time period, considering the fact that now, about 10 years later, it still hasn't been released. But it's true. The game has taken an absolutely redonkulous amount of time to develop, even for such a small development team. But why ever would I say something like that? I mean, after all, with just one single person helming development of a project with so many eyes on it, it could really be that it just takes that long to finish. And who am I, Jormai49, someone with no game development knowledge, to say that the great and glorious Yandere dev hasn't made sufficient progress on his game during the time he's been at work. Well, my dear Jormai 49ers, allow me to read to you just a few of the features that have been added to Yandere Simulator, and I'll see if you can pick up what I'm putting down. Teachers will no longer react to the sight of Yandere Chan throwing a stink bomb if they are guarding a corpse. The hair template.png texture in the streaming assets folder has been replaced with new hair texture for Yandere Chan. From now on, any female student with a smile as their default facial expression will no longer smile if Ryoba tries to speak with them if the student has witnessed Ryoba commit murder in the past. The act of carrying a candle throughout school is now considered a suspicious behavior. Updated the characters page of the official website with new artwork now for on, how for Ryoba looks in modern day. the hairstyle for the 1980s mode martial magic. Updated the hair model for the 1920s inside the asylum. The art club in 1980s mode now creates unique cherry tree paintings on Friday instead of creating the same paintings that they do in the 2020X art club. Thank you. Thank you, Yandere Dev. That was the one I was waiting for. Whew. Now, you might be thinking that this seems somewhat reasonable, but you're my 49 I hear you say. Even if all of those features aren't necessary, isn't it normal there would be many features added over 10 years of development? And I hear you, I really do. But what I just read to you was a small fraction of the features added to the game in 2022. The ninth year of development. Look at the scroll bar on this page, which is dedicated entirely to cataloging the updates that occurred in 2022 alone. It would take me literal hours upon hours to read them out loud. So yeah, it wasn't really the development of the original project was taking such a long time. It was that Yandere Dev just couldn't resist adding more and more features to the point that the current demo barely even resembles the original build played by our favorite horror game connoisseurs back in 2015. Honestly, even if I was a super fan of this game, I think I still would have jumped ship as soon as Alex started talking about developing 1980s mode when the original game wasn't even finished, but I digress. Eventually, it got to the point where people were convinced Alex was doing his utmost to make sure the game wasn't going to be released. In March of 2017, a video game publisher called Tiny Build entered a partnership with Yandere Dev in which they agreed to help him polish, promote, and publish the game. However, by 2018, it was revealed that the agreement had been abolished for some time due to creative differences between Alex and the company. These would ultimately come down to his insistence on adding hundreds of unnecessary features, which we've already been over. There was also a significant drama surrounding the termination of the agreement between Tiny Build and Yandere Dev, including that he supposedly finessed them out of $31,000 somehow, 
I don't really know too much about it, and I won't be going deeper into it. There's a lot of legalese, and I don't feel equipped to handle it. But now, let's get back to discussing how the agreement between Tiny Build and Alex came to an end. One notable thing that irked Tiny Build was Alex's refusal to allow anyone to rewrite his code. This is significant because it leads us into two more grievances the game's followers had with Yandere Dev. Like a twisted two-for-one deal, this deal falling apart is a great demonstration of both Yandere Dev's atrocious programming skills and his complete inability to take any kind of criticism, constructive or not. Let's start with the first one. Over the years, Yandere Dev has become infamous for being absolutely terrible at programming. This has been addressed in countless forum posts and long-form YouTube videos over the years, but basically, he heavily over-relies on if-else statements, which are extremely inefficient and cripple the loading time of the game. He is also notorious for importing models to the game that are way, way, way bigger than they need to be. The best way of demonstrating this to you is to show you the largest file that Yandere Simulator needs to load when you attempt to load in. It's bigger than an entire room, it's bigger than every character model in the game, it's the model that haunts your processor's nightmares. It's a toothbrush. Yeah, so apparently Yandere Dev decided to add an extremely high resolution toothbrush model that was originally intended for like dentist commercial close-ups or something, and it became a symbol to the community of just how doo-doo his programming skills are because this toothbrush alone has caused many a game to crash. Next, we can get into another one of Alex's flaws that has led him to be memed into oblivion and even to be labeled as a lolcow, that being his complete inability to take criticism. Demonstrations of this can range anywhere from him calling someone who doesn't appreciate his design choices either a quote, young child or mentally handicapped, classy, to him instantly banning anyone who posts a meme about him in his discord, the latter of which has even resulted in a popular meme where people speedrun getting banned from his discord server by sending a single message and waiting just a few seconds for him to kick them out. By the way, as far as I know, the current world record run for getting banned from the Yandere dev discord is a mere 6 seconds. Wow. Alex's defense for this is that it is quote, exceptionally rare for him to ban someone, and he only does so when it is the mature and intelligent thing to do, naturally. And while we're on this topic, the most popular memes to send in order to get banned were the are you coding son meme, which poked fun at his immense programming prowess, and the consume the cum chalice meme. The Kum Chowis meme originated as a video Alex made back during the Eva Zephon era, in which he was drinking milk from a chalice. This was first made into a meme all the way back in 2010 by YouTuber Dark Pie Man, who combined it with the phrase, I have never had sex. A classic. But unfortunately, we ourselves cannot experience this masterpiece. As Alex has proved our point about him being overly sensitive by copyright striking the video into oblivion. Luckily, the video more recently became a viral gif courtesy of tenor user FellaCar69, so we still have these gifs to enjoy. Thank goodness. Alex's sensitivity and harsh reactions also sparked another viral meme in 2020 which in turn brought on an immense amount of backlash as Twitter turned its ire onto him. You see, over the years, people began to realize that Yandere Simulator was never going to be released, so they began rushing to produce a game similar in concept and essentially steal Yandere Dev's fans right out from under his chalice-sniffing nose. This led to development beginning for projects like Lovesick and Watashi no Mono, both of which were inspired by Yandere Simulator. Obviously, Alex didn't take kindly to this, and I think we can all understand being a bit upset in his position. However, what I personally can't understand is sliding into the Discord DMs of the developers of these projects in order to basically harass them into stopping development. To Epic Meal Dev, the developer of Watashi no Mano, 
Neandre Dev essentially called his project poor quality and said that people were harassing him because Watashi no Mano was so bad that it, as a copy of Yandere Simulator, was reflecting poorly onto the original. But that's nothing compared to his messages with Dr. Ape Is, the developer of Lovesick. Alex said, quote, if the cost of Yandere Simulator was ending a person's life, I'd cancel development, end quote, which is interpreted by many as him threatening to commit suicide if Lovesick were to be released and steal his thunder. This led people to start calling out Alex en masse, and the hashtag RipYandereDev began to trend on Twitter. And although Alex did make a response, saying that he never threatened to end his life if Lovesick was released, it was far too late. In the eyes of Twitter, Alex had been quote-unquote cancelled, and that meant that all bets were off. And we all know how scary Twitter can be. The last grievance people had with Yandere Dev that I'll be touching on in this section of the video is that, overall, he's just really creepy. And although this might not be surprising to us after going through his degenerate past as Eva Zifan, down bad streamer extraordinaire, it was something that truly shocked those who had just heard of Alex after Yandere Simulator exploded into the mainstream. Now obviously, the amount of creepy stuff that surfaced about Yandere Dev in 2023 is one of the worst examples of this, but since we have a whole separate section of the video dedicated to that, for now, I'll be touching on the most overtly creepy things Alex did prior to that. Of course, Alex has made a ton of statements over the years that sound extremely problematic, like when he asked random girls on 4chan to send him sultry and sexy recordings of their voices, supposedly for inclusion in Yandere Simulator as voice lines. Sure, Alex. But I can't go through every single thing Yandere Dev has ever said that sounded mildly creepy. Which is why I'll move straight to the big guns. As one of the most egregious examples of something you should literally never say to anyone out loud unless it's 100% clear you're telling some kind of joke, Yandere Dev suggested that the age of consent should be replaced by a quote unquote sex license that would allow someone to uh, do the hanky panky thing if they pass a certain test that shows their maturity. Now, unfortunately for Yandere Dev, all of us simpletons are clearly too dense to understand what he was cooking up here. Luckily for us though, he went through the trouble of further elaborating in a Tumblr post he made in response to backlash for these statements. In it, he mentions how someone had asked him if, under his system, say, a 14 year old would be able to obtain a sex license and then fornicate with a grown adult. Alex, you're making me get real creative with the vocab here. Well, as Alex puts it, Well, obviously, if there's a test that objectively proves that a person is ready for sex, and a person passes that test, then that person is objectively ready for sex. This is simple logic. I, I, I don't even know what to say. I can't help but feel like this post gave Yandere Dev somewhat of an opportunity to cover his tracks and explain away what he said, but I guess he decided that this was the hill he wanted to die on. The sex license is theoretically open for 14 year olds. Great. Add it to the record. Now, of course, this wasn't the last thing that Alex said on this subject. He later made another post debunking the claims that he would allow children to obtain a sex license, where he clarifies that his theoretical sex test would require you to have things a child would never be able to obtain, like a college diploma or ownership of a residence. Now, beyond the fact that this is literally contradicted by his own words, it's also pretty crazy to act like it's a better system to make everyone own a house or graduate college in order to bump uglies. But the Jarmai 49ers understand my point, right? In the vein of Alex being needlessly creepy, there's also the time he was linked to multiple reviews of a sex doll, which he used his Patreon proceeds to purchase. But I've already mentioned that, so I'll be moving on now. Overall, I think it's abundantly clear to us that Alex has no perception of how things he says or does will come off to other people, 
and he cannot be trusted with a large platform. This will be emphasized even further in the next section. However, I would like to include one more thing in this section. The infamous video posted by Yandev himself, Hate and Shame. In this baffling animated project, which has since been deleted and re-uploaded due to the original artist denouncing it, Alex portrays himself as a cute anime girl and his detractors as little gremlins in order to tell the story that if you say you're on a diet and the gremlins catch you eating candy one day a month, they will compile all the photos of you eating candy in order to make it look like you're always eating candy, making you seem disingenuous for claiming you're on a diet. The argument seems sympathetic as he says it, until you actually think about what he's saying. Because it's one thing to have candy once a day when you're trying to lose weight, and it's another thing entirely to say or do something creepy and reprehensible once a month and continue pretending you're not a degenerate. In this video, he's quite literally comparing a cute anime girl being photoshopped by gremlins eating candy to him being criticized for saying children should be able to get a sex license. I don't know what kind of boy math Alex is doing, but get me on it right now. And this is what I choose to end this section with. I couldn't have possibly found a better instance to fully encapsulate his character and online presence than this video. It almost makes me want to pack things up now and just skip the next part. Almost. Overall, it's safe to say that everything which occurred from 2014 to 2023 coalesced in a very worrying look for both the Andre Simulator and its developer as a whole. Furthermore, it had now been years since the hype surrounding the simulator had fully died. PewDiePie had since died on some bridge in PUBG. Markiplier, I think, started baking at some point? I'm just kidding. Follow Justin Saiyan on Instagram. One thing they weren't doing though was playing the same demo for a game which still hadn't seen a proper release in nearly 10 years, and for which development seemed to have no end in sight, especially not one with such a problematic developer. But the problems were really only just beginning, because despite everything, Yandere Dev still had things to lose. He was still obtaining that juicy Patreon money, and there were still people collaborating with him to make Yandere Simulator a reality. But that was quickly about to change. Because if you've heard about Yandere Dev recently, you likely know by now that there really aren't many people still willing to associate with him. The project has been dropping supporters left and right, people are calling en masse for Yandere Dev to sell the rights to another developer so it actually has a chance of releasing before the heat death of the universe, and there have been so many memes on the subject that it made the coffin seem like small potatoes. Is it overkill to reference that game twice in one video? I feel like it's bad. But let's get into how all this drama started. See, in mid-2023, Yandere Dev once again entered the internet discourse, with inklings going around on TikTok that he was guilty of being a groomer. But what they were referring to wasn't the accusation we already went over from back during his Eva Z font days. No, this was a fresh allegation involving several inappropriate messages supposedly exchanged between Alex and a girl who was only 16 years old. And if you're easily triggered and somehow haven't heard about this situation yet, you might want to just skip to the conclusion. In September of 2023, YouTuber MCC posted a video going in-depth on these new allegations, providing screenshots from Snapchat conversations that allegedly took place between Alex and the girl, as well as recordings of Discord calls between the two of them. I feel I should note that, according to MCC, nothing illegal occurred across any of these screenshots or recordings. Regardless, they clearly depict Alex discussing mature, inappropriate, and just straight up gross topics with a girl nearly 20 years younger than him, which led many to, obviously, condemn him. Just to give you an example, there are some screenshots here where Alex was discussing how liking someone who is 17 years old is quote unquote 94.4% okay 
because that percentage supposedly represents how close the body of a 17 year old is to an 18 year old. Right. Another screenshot, which some have found so ludicrous that it's actually funny, involves Yandere Dev saying that because the girl technically had the power to get him cancelled at any time by leaking their messages, she had created a power dynamic in which she had power over him, which was emotionally traumatizing him. She responded with a short and to the point, I'm 16. <laughs> Truly, this is the screenshot of all time. Another gem is when, during their Discord call, Alex says that, quote, Mother Nature sexualizes minors through the process of puberty because it gives them adult body parts. Mother Nature sexualizes minors. Puberty starts to give breasts and wide hips to children before they turn 18. Uh, I, uh, I don't know if you should be saying this kind of stuff to a 16 year old man. However, the video with all these allegations was quickly taken down due to a copyright strike, which was supposedly filed by the victim. Ali believed that this was the doing of Alex, who was attempting to silence the allegations by not only filing a false copyright strike, but also inadvertently doxing the victim's real name to the entire internet through the YouTube copyright system. Shortly after this though, Someone claiming to be the victim made a reddit post about how she had in fact filed the copyright claim herself, and the reason was that she told Ali MCC not to post the video, and yet she had done it against her will. Ultimately, it's hard for us to confirm the veracity of any of this, but given that it is literally illegal to impersonate someone else to file a false copyright claim, and Alex hasn't gone to jail yet, uh, that I know of, Many believe he didn't actually do this. But now, let's get into Yandere Dev's various responses to this controversy. To start, on September 25th, 2023, he posted a blog post titled, I'm Sorry. In this post, Alex repeatedly stated that, when facing a controversy like this, he would ordinarily go on a long diatribe explaining how in each and every instance, the conversation was taken out of context and he didn't mean to do anything wrong. But at the end of the day, he recognized that he should never be in a situation where he is saying these things to a minor nearly 20 years younger than him. Because of this, he completely understood why people wanted to cease their association with him and step away from the project, and that he wouldn't hold any of them back. Just a few days later, on October 1st, he made another post titled Moving Forward. He provided in this post a sort of explanation for how things had gotten to the point where something like this would happen, and his largest justification was that his judgment had been clouded and he had become a worse person due to the fact that he had been working on Yandere Simulator 16 hours a day and he hadn't left his house since an anime convention in 2019. Ultimately, this obviously doesn't change anything. Regardless of whether or not these shut-in otaku world record pace statistics are true, Alex still did what he did. Honestly, his explanation here is very reminiscent of his past behavior as Eva Zephon, when, while he was criticized for his weird worldview and odd behavior on the forums, he brought up his difficult childhood and how he didn't go outside a lot. But regardless, he then moves on to discussing the future of the project, mentioning that he would be considering selling the Yandere Simulator IP to a video game development company, but only as a last resort. He also promised to take some time away from development, seek therapy, and maybe be a teensy bit less terminally online. All of which are good things of course, but uh, it might be too little too late at this point. Regardless, despite the overwhelming amount of backlash Yandere Dev was facing at this point, there was still some positivity left for him on the internet. Many fans were happy to see him actually taking accountability for once. These allegations were so serious that he had broken the infamous Alex Mann cycle. Instead of doubling down and lashing out at everyone around him, he had instead admitted how atrociously bad he had messed up and promised to better himself. And with that, he was largely silent, until the big one, January 1st, 2024. 
Alex decided to start the new year by making a splash. On the very first day of the year, he posted a monolith blog post and a YouTube video to go along with it, where he actually stands in front of the mic and spits directly to us instead of hiding behind an anime girl and gremlins and whatnot. And yet, it still wasn't received very well. Let's just get directly into the video. I think the best way to demonstrate to you the overall vibe of this video is to show you this meme I found on Twitter. Ready? Go! Hello, I'm Yandere Dev, the developer of Yandere Simulator. Last year, an extremely serious allegation was made about me that I would like to address. The accusation is that I attempted to groom an underage fan of my game. I will take accountability and admit that I did discuss inappropriate topics with a fan. Yeah, it doesn't take very long for Yandere Dev to basically admit that the conversations were real. However, what follows is essentially the opposite of admitting wrongdoing. A large part of the video's runtime was actually Alex trying to contextualize the inappropriate conversations he had with the girl, and describing how Ali MCC had basically coached her into coaxing out creepy statements from him in order to get him cancelled. And look, I understand if you think that's a scummy thing to do, but at the end of the day, you are the one who fell for it. Even if we take Alex at his word and assume that it is 100% confirmed that Ali had it out for him and tried to trick him into speaking inappropriately with a minor, why on earth was she successful? As many have pointed out, there is no reason for Yandev to continue speaking to the girl as soon as he learned she was 16 years old. And even if he was dead set on continuing to be friends with her, nobody held him hostage and forced him to say things about how being 17 is really similar to being 18, or how minors are sexualized by nature. That just didn't happen, I'm sorry. So was this video a game changer for Yandere Dev? I would say not. Honestly, I would actually say that this video made things worse for him. In his very first response to the situation, the I'm sorry blog post, Alex made sure to say he wouldn't go through the allegations and contextualize them one by one, because he accepted that he had messed up and that was all there is to it. This video shows that none of that was genuine, and that he had intended all this time to come back at a later date and do just that. But clearly, Alex had similar feelings about the video's failure to win people over, because within literally five days of uploading it, he pulled the video from the internet. Which is why I had to use footage from Turkey Tom's video for this section. Thanks, man. Up top. And, well, now Yandere Dev's kind of gone back to the same old, same old. He's continuing to upload development updates to the blog, and is basically acting like none of this ever happened. In fact, he posted a few updates just a few days before writing this script. So where then does this leave us? Ultimately, I think this comment on Alex's January 15 development update is a pretty good way of summing up the entire Yandere Dev era. As Velashores rightfully asks, Hey Yandere Dev, I have a question for you. On Discord, most of the time when someone try to contact you or message you, you most of the time say, I'm too busy building the game. But the question I have for you is why you just felt to talk to that one girl. I mean, you said she sounded funny, but if most of the people that contacted you, would you continue talking to them? Uh, a wordsmith, he is not. But he brings up a good point. Alex is a hypocrite. He constantly claims to be too busy to respond to fans, but does so when it's a young girl who he could easily get in trouble for talking to. He also refuses to accept help to reduce how busy he is, and generally improve the quality of his game, which leads to his problems compounding upon themselves. And the sooner that he realizes that, and the sooner that he gets off the internet and is able to receive some real, genuine support from people who care about him, the better. But what do I know? I've just been your host, Jormai49. What a ride, and good night.
and stay safe to my 49ers. I love you all, but not in a weird way. Oh, and thank you for sticking with me through this long video if anybody is still actually here. I wanted to go through the entire story and do it justice, but obviously that took quite a bit of time, making this I think my longest video yet. So if you're still here, thank you, I appreciate it. Leave a comment about what you thought. Subscribe, follow me on Twitter, yada yada, okay, bye.